Hey guys, this is Sam the Geek, and today I have a very good old friend of mine, Slasher Thrasher, and he's returning to YouTube. He's trying to get back into the swing of things. He came back from, uh, where'd you come back from again? Iraq, uh, Afghanistan. 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 Yeah, so he was on tour doing his thing, and now he's back in Arizona, and he wants to make YouTube videos again, and he's come up with this really original style of just really quick, fast-paced video game reviews, and I, I dig it. I may not dig the little high-pitched voice a lot, but <laughs> I dig it. I won't it. talk about that. Yeah. Um, now, uh, he, I've known him forever, like from since the Freeze Cracker days, and why don't you give us some background on your channel, how you got into YouTube, and what you're up to now. Well, basically, I uh, <clears throat> I used to work at a GameStop or EB Games before it got bought by GameStop back in two thousand and one, two, uh, and and I didn't. I've, I've been a huge gamer, but it wasn't until about two thousand, I believe, four or five. Uh, I just saw the YouTube thing going on, and I and I had a camera, and I started recording myself playing Stranglehold, actually, and uh, I just recorded that and did commentary while I played, and uh, people started subscribing, and it kind of took off from there, and then I got a capture device and. And I've been through channels that's been closed, people deleting my stuff and all that crap. I restarted and then uh, got kind of going again, and then uh, I left. I, had, I went to go take a job overseas, and I was there for a little a little over a year, a year and a quarter. And uh, now I'm back. Um, right now I'm just taking it easy. I, I'm not working at the moment. I'm just kind of focusing on YouTube. I bought a new camera. Um, I bought new equipment, new computer, and I've just been really going gung-ho with the uh, YouTube stuff. All right. So you wanted to explain, uh, I know you have this new fast, quick style of review. Why don't you explain that and why you do the squeaky voice and all that? <laughs> okay. Well, first off, uh, quickie, uh, the, the idea for the quickies, which is what I call it, quickies, is that it's a fast-paced style review. Now, you know, the, what I thought is, you know, everybody, you know, everybody puts out walkthroughs, everybody puts out let's plays, everybody puts out reviews. I mean, there's things that it just you're common out there, and it's the the YouTube community saturated with, and it's not a bad thing, but there's a lot of it. The other thing I've noticed is that you know a lot of people, especially if you don't have a huge fan base, if people are just coming to your channel to check something out, uh, long videos people people seem to not want to tolerate as much. I mean, once you have a lot of subscribers, a lot of viewers, you can pretty much post up, post anything, and it'll get hits, and your 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 fans will watch it. But if you don't have that build up quite yet, um, uh oh. Slash, are you there? Um, I just think it's better if you stick with more. Can you hear me? Yeah, well, man, you you cut out there for a second. Oh. Okay. Um, but um, I just think that a long, saturated videos aren't a good way to get people's attention. People don't have attention spans. So with that said, I thought, well, what if you do a quick review that's to the point, kind of puts you know notes quickly on the good, the bad, and kind of gives it a funny spin. Um, I, d I was using this high-pitched voice. It was kind of annoying, but that was kind of the point. It was trying to get your attention, you know, just kind of kind of quirky. I have taken a lot of feedback on that, though. A lot of people like the style of the review, but they don't like the voice. So actually, as officially of today, I did a review for uh, Dawn Guard on Skyrim, and the voice is gone. I'm still going to keep to doing, you know, funny, funny comments in the reviews, but, you know, or maybe, you know, an excited voice for, like, yelling something. But there's a normal voice throughout the reviews from now on. So hopefully, I'm not I'm not one that's against tweaking and learning from the community and what people like and don't like. All right, that's cool. I haven't watched that video yet because uh, I didn't want I want Don Guard spoiled. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And how, speaking of spoilers, a lot of people do accidentally spoil in your review in their reviews. Are your reviews like that at all? I mean, not really. It just depends on what you consider a spoiler. Like, I don't go in depth with uh, the plot. Like, in for example, I give the main plot point of the new of the new uh, expansion on Dawn, down. Dawn, I always want to say down guard of Dawn guard, but actually, that's only the main plot point. Actually, even from just the vampires quest, I didn't even touch the the other quest that I you know the if you go against the vampire. So that's a whole other side of that story that I don't know. Um, but no, normally in, in these reviews, I don't have a lot of time to focus and spoil a lot. I show video clips, you know, th I, I show quite a bit of video clips 
throughout the review as quick as possible. Um, and I try to show just kind of some basic gameplay and moments, but I, I don't try to go too heavy, heavy spoilers. And even when I was doing longer reviews, I, I, I never tried to spoil anything. And if I did, you know, I always tried to mention like their spoilers. Now, in my Spider Man review for The Amazing Spider Man, I started off saying spoiler alert, spoiler alert, but I was simply saying that because the game takes place after the movie. So anything you're seeing in the video footage possibly could spoil, you know, maybe little details or things that you might pick up. You know, before you see the movie, I think and that's that, why I said that. I think that's such an awful decision on Activision's part by releasing that game before the movie. Yeah, they they should have released it the week of the movie. I I, I don't know why they did that, but or after, but yeah, you know, yeah, no, yeah, or during or the week of. I mean, granted, I don't, I only picked up on like two big spoilers really, and I wouldn't say they're huge spoilers, especially if you're fans of the comic or followed Spider Man. But yeah, no, for the most part, I I try to avoid spoilers and and. And anything I do, unless it's like a walkthrough, obviously, or a let's play, because that's showing the whole game. So, what's the process of you critiquing a game? Do you just, like, uh, go through the game, or do you, like, analyze about it, think about the price, or uh, what do you think is the best way to uh, analyze a game, in your opinion? Well, you know, to be to be quite fair and honest, I think a lot of gamers these days are, are really, really... Uh, I don't want to say picky, but they're very harsh. And I'm not saying that gaming. Uh, I'm not saying every game is an amazing game because God, you know, there's there's very mediocre or average games. But uh, you know, with me, as you've probably noticed, I tend to enjoy quite a bit of games, and even games that aren't amazing. If there was something in it that I found enjoyment out of, you know, I can say you know it was a decent game. But overall, the main thing I always like to look at when it comes to re- reviewing games is my enjoyment personally, and then also. Technically, how did it work? It, it, to me, if a game didn't gel that well with a story, and maybe the gameplay wasn't super exciting, but it was overall built well, there wasn't really any issues like with clipping, you know, glitches, and it just, you know, it was a decent length, I can still, you know, give it some redeeming factors. It's games like Damnation and other, you know, there's a couple other games out there I can't think of off the top of my head, but they're just almost fundamentally broken and just are really piss poor that you know i believe those games are the games that should truly get like twos and threes but when you see a game like uh, i don't i can't think of anything recent but there's been a, there's been games like like uh shoot i can't think of anything off the top of my head but there's been games where it's like they give it like a three or a four out of ten and it's like you know the, those are scores i would think you'd want to give to games that are almost broken and just are really garbage well because to, go ahead you know uh there's a difference between gamers like us and journalists and stuff than, yeah. than other YouTube reviewers. I tend to be more lenient to when thinking of YouTube reviewers because you got to think about it like this, man. They only get a couple of games a year, whereas yeah. people like me and you, we get tons and tons yeah. and tons of games. We like, play everything. I have like at least 16 games I'm trying to play right now. Yeah. And and for them, it's like they get maybe 16 games every two years. So, no, oh, yeah, they have to be picky, and I and I understand that, and that's why you know the, you can rent them or borrow them from a friend. But see, but then that even goes to the point they you know to me you can't judge a game off of well I can only pick 16 games, so I'm only going to pick these games, and this game sucks. But I just I really don't like the whole this game sucks. You 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 suck for liking it, and you just sad because you spent money on it. It's like. Not, not really, dude. It's just the internet's a the internet's a funny place. So, I just tend to be more optimistic when it comes to gaming. And to me, it's a it's for me. It's I enjoy that because I actually enjoy most of the stuff I play. I, I have a good time. I'm not like that sucked. That sucked. That sucked. That was cool. That sucked. That sucked. That was awesome. That sucked. No, for me, it's mostly liked it. Liked it. This was what was unique in this game. This is what unique. And man, that game's a turd. Don't play that game. <laughs> you know. Well, one thing I gotta ask is because a, yeah. lo- a lot of people like us who play a lot of video games, who play multiple consoles, we often, for some reason, unlike fanboys, we don't really get tar. They don't get said. They don't get you know said. Oh, they're paid off. But people like us are always quote unquote paid off. Have you ever been accused of being paid off or by anyone? <laughs> No, I haven't really been accused of being paid off. I have been accused of being an Xbox 360 fanboy, and the reason being is because that's that's my primary system I play on. 
Um, I have a PS3. I had a Wii, but I just recently sold it because, well, let's face it, there's really not any Wii games coming out. The Wii U's up on around the corner. It's backwards compatible with Wii games. There's, it was just kind of like, okay, it's time to time to move on with that. But I played a shit ton of Wii games. I have a PS3 and Xbox. But when it comes to multi-platform games, I play my games on Xbox for two reasons. For my achievements, because I just have a huge achievement score from when I started playing Xbox 360 when it first launched. I bought one. And um, and then also I have a, my friends list on there. But anything that's exclusive on PS3, like, you know, Infamous 1 and 2, I have all the Uncharted's. Um, I need to pick up the God of War collection again so I can have all those. Heavy Rain, stuff like that, you know, uh, Yakuza Dead Souls, Resistance, it's those games, you know, I, ha- I have those. And I really like PS3. I uh, am looking forward to, uh, like, The Last of Us and um, Beyond Two Souls and the new God of War. I mean, I-, I like both systems. I just, people tend to think I'm a 360 fan because I play most of my stuff on 360 when no. oh. it's just due to my, my personal reasons. I don't think one system is better than the other. Yeah, I have the same problem. Like people think I'm an Xbox fanboy. It may be because I'm. I've had a lot of problems with the PS3, and I just mm. think that you know it's not an easy to use system. But you know, if if there's an exclusive for the PS3, I'm it's interested in. I, 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 if there's an exclusive for the PS3, I'm interested. In, I pick it up. Or if uh, the game performs better on PS3, I pick it up. But if you know, if the game performs better on Xbox or it has, yeah. on, or it has online, I'm gonna get it on Xbox because. Oh yeah. All my friends I, are on Xbox Live. I don't have anyone on PSN really. Exactly, and that's kind of the same thing. And I don't even. I mean, I have a couple friends at PS3, but I mean, I, I, I don't. Most of my gaming friends locally and all, you know around the world are on Xbox. But um, again, if somebody's like, "Hey, what do you think of PS3?" I don't downplay it. I don't say it's shitty. I'm like, it's it's a good. I like the games that are exclusive on it, and. You know, it's it's a Blu-ray player, and you know, I dig it. I like it. It's just I personally play it mostly on Xbox, but yeah, that's that's the take. Nobody's really accused me hardcore, but it's just that's that's usually yeah. the stance that's come from. And one thing people don't understand is that for people that play a lot like me and you, um, those installs that come on like ninety percent of PS3 games don't fly that well. You know, what I mean? yeah, it's just yeah. a it's a hassle to rent and borrow games on PS3. It's just a it's just an ailment, whereas on Xbox, I can just throw the game in, start playing, and return it to the person or whatever. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a, the Xbox is just a system built for reviewers, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, I don't know, I just prefer it, but I don't, again, I don't, I don't bitch smack any of the other consoles. I've liked them all, even like the Wii. So it's just, again, for me, because I play so many games, it's about exclusives, and it's about just what I can get exclusively on each system. And then, of course... If there's a if there's a system that has all the games, you know, the other third party games come out on and you want to get it on there, cool beans. That's just how it works. Yeah. So what are some future projects? I know you used to do skits and all that stuff back in the freeze cracker days. Are you still interested in doing anything like that or do you have anything planned? I know you had your Alan Wake style video released recently. Yeah, that was like a two year thing that it got postponed because I left and but I mean yeah, that got finished. I really, I do like that style. I do like doing stuff like that. Problem is that kind of that kind of thing takes well time, but that's not too bad to get right now. I have plenty of time, but the other thing is money. Um, you know, I had to drive six hours away for that, rent the place out, split food, gas, and everything to get up there. It was like a six-hour drive, um, but it was awesome, and I, I love to do that. And I want to try to start to get into maybe more live-action stuff. I've started doing like music par- music songs, like parodying stuff like diablo and other little skits but um i know a couple of people liked i uh, really liked my like live action stuff and I, if i can think of some good ideas to do for those and add to game certain games like maybe resident evil 6 or anything else that's coming out assassin's creed you know any of the big tiles i might try and do that again but if i don't have a good enough idea i'm not going to half-ass it and just kind of try to go for it i mean i usually when i do stuff i try to put as much effort in as possible when it comes to that kind of stuff um but I mean, really, I'm just I, the thing is, is since I first started YouTube back in 2005, six, and now it's changed so much, and it's so it's, there's so much out there, and there's so much content, and there's a lot of oversaturation, I think. And so for me, I'm trying to, I still, you know, I want this to be a gaming channel, but at the same time, I'm trying to branch out and just do different, you know, maybe creative things because it's my YouTube, and it YouTube's about being creative and just putting out your ideas because you never know what's gonna take off. So while I mainly will focus on gaming and geeky stuff, 
you know, I do like to just do random other things that are just don't make any sense. Like, like I was, I started an alphabet project where I, you know, like teaching the alphabet one letter at a time, but it, it involves some form of humor or just something weird about it. So I've only done A, A and B so far, but that's kind of like my future idea. Um, I'd love to do collabs with people, but I've noticed uh, over the last month or so, you know, people saying they want to do collabs and then actually doing them is kind of tough. People either don't have the time or they just don't want to do it, even though they say they want to support the YouTube community. So it's kind of, kind of jaded me a little bit on trying to even ask anybody because it's, you know, you get some of these YouTubers, especially the really popular ones, are like, we want to help YouTubers and other fellow YouTubers that aren't, you know, maybe aren't as popular, and, and it doesn't happen. It, it doesn't, it, you know, it's, so it's kind of like, eh. But um, other than that, I love it when people comment and ask me questions and stuff. I love to respond, and that's kind of where I'm going for right now. I'm just trying to get a uh, user base back up and going and uh, go from there. Yeah, since the return to YouTube, have has it been hard since you've been gone a long time? to get some of those old fans back or people just like, hey, Sasha, you're back. Well, <clears throat> there's actually been quite a big response. There's actually quite a few people that are like, dude, I've been watching you since you started and I love your stuff and continue doing it and blah, blah, blah. You know, they're really they're really supportive. But the, the, the biggest thing I've noticed is, and I think it's because YouTube's changed and also the, thing, the changes they've been going over through their website, you know, over the last few months or year, and and the crowd and how how videos are distributed now like i'm putting out a shit ton of content right now and i don't my numbers don't really they don't really go up like they'll go up a little bit then like i'll lose a couple which is normal but they don't go up nearly like they would have in the past i don't think it's it's much it's a much slower process well, to a, get people to subscribe it's also more saturated like back when we started youtube remember whitey was one of the biggest people now yeah. He, he's like a nobody and we're like nobodies now too we used to be quite popular yeah we're all i mean he's he's got quite a he's still got quite a bit of subs but yeah he's not up there like some of these people like the gun shop and woody's gamer tag and but you know that actually kind of leads me on a whole another topic um i think a lot of these people that are popular in gaming have gotten popular from one thing and Call i won't of duty. Yeah, Call of Duty. And, you know, people have actually said, dude, why don't you do Call of Duty videos? Uh oh. And I said, you know what? That's great. And I'm glad if people took off on that. But I don't want to do that because I don't think I, that's fairly earning that. I, one, I don't think it's fairly earning that. And two, I just don't like Call of Duty that much to focus on Call of Duty constantly to get that fan base. I would go bored with my own YouTube. And I yeah. think that. What, it's bad. What, what's so odd is that YouTube channels nowadays just focus on one game. And I don't I don't get that. I couldn't just make content on one single game over and over and over yeah. and over again. And yep, I mean, it's... I love Fallout. Fallout is my favorite franchise, but I couldn't yeah, see I mean, myself doing a thousand Fallout videos. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, and I understand what you're saying. Like, there's that guy, uh, Epic Bro, na Epic Name Bro, or whatever, who does Dark Souls videos. That's all he does. You know, and it's like these people focus on one thing and like, whereas me, I focus on every game and I focus on, like I said, skits and I try to do a little, I try to do a little bit of everything just to provide entertainment because that's what YouTube's about. What, what sucks is that people don't do it out of the heart and soul of, you know, just trying to make content. I was listening to a, a podcast of some of these big people over in the Call of Duty community and they literally mm. were like debating what would the next big game be when Battlefield 3 was coming out. They were trying to get the metrics about how much money they can make off Battlefield, how they could speed up the game so that they can try to fit it in a small enough video so that children could digest it. And it's just like, this is disgusting. Are you really breaking down your videos that much to see how you can make money off of them? That's, yeah, I, I, that's disgusting. I, like, just make stuff because you like to. And you have, yeah. you have stuff like I Just Teen Gaming who just jumped on the gaming bandwagon too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's one thing. I have a few fans that talk to me online, and and the one thing they always tell me is they go, "Dude, you put a lot of effort in your in what you're doing, and and your stuff's creative, and you try all these different things." And I'm like, "Yeah," and I said, "It's actually it's it's kind of depressing because there's don't get me wrong, I love doing this stuff for fun, but you know, I do want to take it further one day." And it's it, you you know I sit back sometimes and I think of all the time and effort I put in this, and I'm like, I'm not really getting any results, but. You know, I just keep pushing myself to keep going. Well, That's all I can do. You know, for people who work hard, it'll pay off in the long run. I'll tell you that right now. 
the harder you work and the harder other people work, the creative people, the people who are uh, interesting and do it for the fun of it and do it because they just like to do it, those people will come out on top. The Call of Duty thing, it's not going to last forever. It's it's already yeah. dying. It's already so oversaturated that people can't even jump into it anymore. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I mean, is. that's why I, honestly I don't even like to do. That's why I don't do review scores in my quickies either. That there's no score because all I want to do is I want to give some my opinion of the game and I want to show them the game. And if they liked what I said and they like the footage they see, they don't need to have a score. They don't need to know what my score would be. They can just either decide I want to play it or I don't want to play it. And that's all. That's what I like to push on that. I don't. I don't like the review score systems. I've never liked them because everybody focuses on a number and not the game. Yeah. And it just it boils down to that. I'm mixed on review scores because I can see why people would want that because for, for someone like me, words say a lot, but a grade also helps the words because, you know, I could say something is something's pretty good or something is okay – and those have two completely different meanings when they have a number attached to it. So it could con- yeah. it could change the whole tone of the review. True, true. And, but see, and then I also think like with mine and with other – I know there's a couple other people that don't do scores either. Um, it's very easy though to see like a review with no score and then go to like Metacritic just if you're curious and be like, well, what scores did it get? Uh, you know, but y- me personally, I'm, I'm a very adamant guy on if I like something and I like how it looks – I don't care what a person's review is, and I don't care what their score is. I'll watch it, and I'll see what they have to say. But if bottom line, if I want to play it and I'm interested enough, I will play it. Unless unless the review says it is so abyssal, abyssal, abyssally broken that it just does like it freezes, it hard locks, you know, that everything's fucked up in it. Then then yeah, then I you know I, okay, I don't want to touch that because it's. It's no good. It's broken. But other than that, there's so many games I played that are rated four or fives or sixes that I really liked. That I was like, wow, this was a lot of fun. Well, the thing, the the reason I say this is because uh, I, I see it as an economy of scale, sort of. You know, the review mm-hmm. score kind of scales it because an iOS game, even if an iOS game is not the most amazing thing in the world, it's only a dollar. And it can, if it's really fun and it gets me to sit down and play it for a couple hours, that's saying something about that game. Like the new game Split that I reviewed on my channel, it's mm-hmm. a very fun game. It may not be the most addictive game in the world, but I gave it an 8, and that's a really high score. And the reason I gave it an 8 is because it's for the price and, and how well it done it is and for just how cool it is. It, mm. it was worth that. It was worth an 8. Yeah. But if it was on any other system, if I put that same game on an Xbox 360 and charged 10 bucks for it, it would have been like a 4 or 5. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand that completely. And that's the other thing about reviews. You know, everything is subjective because when it comes to gaming, you know, honestly, especially because games are so story-driven, if you don't like a story in a game, that's obviously going to hamper your enjoyment of the game, even if the game is made... F- Uh-oh. Uh, man, technical difficulties. One minute. Flawlessly. Say it was made perfectly. Yeah, yeah there, I'm back. You, you were in the middle of saying, even if, oh, a, game well, just, was, even if a game was made even flawlessly. Even if a game was, per- like, yeah, even if a game was flawless, gameplay-wise, if you didn't like the story because it just didn't gel with you, like, you just didn't like the setting or what their the point of the story was, you would probably rate that game somewhat significantly lower than you would if it had a great story. And so, I mean, that's where... Sc- scores are kind of subjective because kind of like i'll give you a good example it's like scary games fear is subjective fear is different with everybody everybody handles fear differently so while one person might say oh my god dead space scared the ever-loving crap out of me one person's like dude it's just some guy in a metal suit going through space fighting like these freaks you know it didn't really scare me at all or you get something like amnesia that really doesn't have any combat and it's all puzzles and atmosphere. And some people are like, that game's boring as shit. And then other people are like, dude, I would, I can't, that game scared the crap out of me. I couldn't even play it anymore. I, so I, I for think, me, I think the best example of that is mm-hmm. L.A. Noir. Oh, yeah. Because L.A. Noir is an interesting game because it's a cop game. It's set in the GTA style universe. And mm-hmm. it, it, it kind of was repetitive if you didn't like it. But I, I know me and a couple of my friends, 
we just got super into the story. And I loved every second of that game. And when I went online, I just saw, oh, this is boring as shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Cause yeah he- it's boring. Yeah, people say, dude, I even I even kind of was on that bandwagon when it first came out. I was like kind of into it, and I got bored, and I, I just couldn't feel compelled to play it. Same thing happened to me with Red Dead Redemption. Well, when I was in Afghanistan, I had a lot of time on my hands, and I ordered games to keep me busy because there was nothing else to do other than work and play games, basically. So I actually played through all of Red Dead Redemption again, and I played through all of L.A. Noire, the complete edition. And I absolutely loved both of them. Like, absolutely. Like, I was like, holy crap, these are great games with great stories. And why did I ever, you know, why did I ever think about, like, why did I ever not give it a chance? And that's that goes on to another subject of mine that I think sometimes you're just not in the mood for certain types of games. Or you let reviews or ideas of, uh, of initial impressions of a game get you enough to just jade you on the experience. And then you either don't give it a chance or you just blow it off. And that's why I think it's very important, and I've tried doing this a lot recently, blackouts. you got to black yourself yes. out on media when you're going to review a game because yes. it will sway you. If you read news on it constantly, if you're obsessed, it will sway you one way or another whether you're going to like a game. Oh, I, I agree, and uh, that's actually a good topic too because – uh, I used to watch everything online, anything and everything that came out. This E3, I watched some of the press conferences and some of the announcement things. That's it. Like my friend was trying to get me to watch uh, Resident Evil gameplays. I said, dude, I've, they've spoiled enough as it is on their little launch trailer thing. I'm not watching anything more. I know I want it. I know I want that game. Why do I need to spoil anything else? And I've been doing that with Tomb Raider. Like I saw the new Tomb Raider trailer. I'm done. I don't need to see anything else. Assassin's Creed, I haven't even watched the full-blown new stuff on it. I think I saw one little clip, and I was like, don't need to see anything else. Darksiders 2, I've seen like hardly shit on. These, everything I know I'm going to get already, or at least play, I have decided I don't need to watch it because I don't need to spoil it, and I, don't, I know I'm going to play it. So there's no point in you know, ruining what could happen in a game. You know? Yeah, like and it, 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 covering E3 kind of ruined some games for me. Like... For example, Darksiders 2, I played that on live, and I can say that, eh. I just, I wish I hadn't played that section. It's probably a lot better than that, but, you know, the part I played was not very good, in my opinion, in comparison to the yeah. original. And I kind of wish I didn't play that, because now... Because now, it's, it's kind of making you think Now that, I'm slanted. That's why yes. when I covered E3, I had some big games in there, but what I did was try to expose a lot of little stuff, like the E-Slate, like, uh, mm-hmm. gaming credit card that was that was really interesting it was an interesting new technology or diff, like the magic the gathering people because you can't really spoil that and they just like explain yeah. new things like i tried to cover stuff that was small like somewhat independent or, or you know just just there that no one else would have shown you not yeah. assassins I, I had one assassin's creed video i believe but not yeah. assassin's creed just Stuff you would not see on other. Yeah, the small, the small guys, the things that are just like kind of in the corners of the convention, and you know that aren't in the big leagues, you know. But they still, you don't have to be in the big leagues to be good. And Um, and as someone who's been to Comic Con E3 like me, you could say that that's some of the most interesting fucking stuff, even if it never comes out. (laughs) Oh, oh, not only that, but you know, I will say this too: those people that usually are there promoting, whether it's the development people. Or the development people and some PR guy representative representatives, they're usually really, really fucking cool shit. And I mean, yeah, for the bigger guys, they are too. I mean, I've met some really cool people doing that as well. But these these independent, you know, are usually a lot more. I guess you want to say I won't say user friendly, but they're more fan based because that's all they've got. They're they're growing. Um, I will say from personal experience, like uh, two of the two of the developers or teams from developers. Both of them actually were from EA. Actually, surprised me when 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 uh, Bioware was coming out with Dragon's Age and they had a big Dragon Age thing set up. Um, I believe that, that's the com- that was the San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, is, 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 is that yeah. the one where they were giving out the inflatable swords that we went to? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That was it. Now that remember they had a they had their they had their little EA thing kind of separate because they had Left 4 Dead in there. Yeah, across had, the street. Yeah, the EA and, Gaming uh, Lounge. I have a picture. Yes, of that, so. and they. Uh, I remember I went over to the Dragon Age and nobody was paying attention. So I sat down, I started playing. This guy comes over, and he introduces himself and, and he's like, "Hey, I'm I, if you don't mind, I'm going to sit here and talk to you about this." I said, "Sure." And then he starts. To, I don't remember his name, but he starts talking. He's, yeah, I'm actually one of the developers. I'm like, "Holy shit, really?" So I just start talking to him, and he takes me through the whole demo, and I was like, "Wow, that was impressive." 
And then one of the other guys that impressed me with just his how friendly he was. Um, well, there's one more too. How friendly he was was um, and it was another EA game. The <laughs> how friendly he was was um, the guy from uh, the Dead Space. They did a thing wow. on Dead Space for the Wii. Steve Popolopoulos, I think is his name. And he was really cool and laid back in the convention and very, very fan friendly. And then the other guy, I ended up meeting uh, Tim Schafer. Wow. And he was he was cool as shit, man. It was for Brutal Legend. I ran over there. I ran to the line. I, I lost my badge. Like, like right before I got to see him, I'm like, where did my badge go? I lost it running through the crowd because we were running late. And so I, I get up to him, and I remember he looks at me, and he goes, you okay? He goes, you look a little lost. I said, oh, man, I was so excited to see you and get you the sign. I ran over here and I lost my badge. He goes, oh, man. And I had a Tenacious D shirt on. And he goes, oh, do you like the D? And I said, oh, yeah, I love them. And he goes, yeah, awesome. He goes, you look familiar. Do I know you? <laughs> and I'm like, no, <laughs> no. And um, he signed the thing. And when he when I looked down at what he signed, he said, uh, you know, hey, Justin, blah, blah, blah. He said, thanks for running. <laughs> You know, I <laughs> hope you find your badge, et cetera. And uh, he's just a really cool laid-back guy, too. But from the, I played all his games from early PC games uh, to Brutal Legend, and uh, he's a funny guy. You can tell from his game. Development. But that, my point is is just that, uh, you know, there's some developers out there that are really cool fan-based, and then the indie guys and the more left-known are also usually really good about that. Um, one, because they're just building up. But, you know, they, I think they just kind of have more of a – they're more in reality with their fans – and some of these bigger guys are too, but some of them aren't because they're kind of up in that cloud of like we're a game well, developer. It, it all depends. You can kind of tell who it is because yeah. some of the yeah. some of the bigger developers who have like this cult of personality around them, they're like some of the biggest douchebags ever. But a yeah. lot of the guys that are real programmers and they sit down, uh, like uh, when I was at E3, the Battlefield guys were so damn nice to me. It was, cr- I mean, not E3 at Comic Con, and that was really cool. Well, my friend. It's about time we wrap this up. So go ahead yeah. and tell us all of your links, your Twitter, your YouTube, etc. Yeah, basically, uh, if you go to www.youtube.com slash slasherjpc is where you can find me on YouTube, uh, Twitter. You can even go to uh, www.slasherjpc.com. It's a small, just blogger website, but it's uh, my own domain. And I usually just put what I've got on YouTube on there. It's usually a little delayed because... It's just focused on. It's kind of like a almost like a backup in a way, pointing to other stuff. But yeah, you can check me out on there. Follow me on Twitter. You know, if you guys like my videos, subscribe, hit the like button, and I'm always looking for uh, criticism and feedback on my stuff. I like to take stuff and you know learn from it. So if you guys have anything you want to say, you know, check me out. I'd love to hear from y'all. All right, I'll include all those links in the YouTube description. It was great talking to you, Slasher. Have a you nice too, man. day.